Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We give praise to God for His goodness to us all, and we thank Him very much for all the benefits He grants us. We praise Him for the family of our brother and ask God in His loving kindness to continue to watch over them all and grant eternal rest to the soul of their mother through Christ our Lord. We pray today in a special way for all of us and in another way we pray for our beloved brother Jim of here and all who work with him. We ask that God continue to bless him and bless their families and grant success to the work of their hands through Christ our Lord. Beloved ones in Christ, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and beg God for pardon and grace.
They will be defended only by your protection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
presence at this moment, we are set to listen to your word. We beg you to open the eyes of our minds and our hearts. Remove every spirit of destruction, every spirit of worry, anxiety, and suffering. Give us listening ears to pay attention to your word. May your word today and always yield abundant fruits in our lives to Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. The word of God tells us in the book of Genesis that everything God created after creation, God saw all that he made, everything was good. Praise the Lord. There was no suffering, there was no death, there was no pain. Everything God created was very good. So there was peace, there was unity, there was harmony in creation. But this unity, this love, was destroyed by man, by the sin of Adam and Eve. Death came to this world, and that is why St. Paul will tell us that the wages of sin is what? Death, what job or what? As a result of the fall of man, sin entered the world, suffering entered the world, death entered the world, and so we continue to have suffering. We continue to have that sorrow and pain. In the first of today, from the book of Job, we all know the story of Job. Job was a righteous man. He lived a righteous life. And then the devil came and took permission from God. It's because you favored him so much. That is why he respects you, he honored you. And God said to the devil, do whatever you like with him. Job will never insult me or abuse me. And we know how Job suffered so much. And that is why in Job chapter 1, verse 21, as I said, if for our modern service of song, naked I came to this world, naked I shall return. Praise the Lord. Amen. suffering in this world. Jesus Christ came. Jesus would have removed suffering. No. Jesus would not eradicate suffering. But he gave the suffering a new meaning. Praise the Lord. Why do we suffer? Why? There are three reasons why people suffer. There are sufferings that are caused by human beings. I would call it man made suffering. Probably because you have gone to sin when you are so and are going to a rich uh, prison and you are suffering. That suffering has come as a result of what you have done wrong. And that is what Peter says, let's look at chapter 3, verse 17. He says, It is better to suffer for doing good than to suffer for doing evil. You may suffer because of what you have done yourself. If you eat bad food, the wrong food, therefore, I am a woman. It is not God that is sending you that suffering. You will be aware now. If you eat the evil of a woman because of bad food, it is a man made suffering. There is a natural suffering. Or the devil. But in spite of all these sufferings, without man made suffering, without natural one, there is a remedy. Praise the Lord. It's only Jesus 
to Jesus. The doctor of the house is the best. But we have only one hope. Remember what happened to Peter in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. Peter was about trying. He was walking on the sea. The Lord said to him, walk on the water. And he was walking. And then he remembered when he was sinking. He said, Lord, save me. And then Jesus stretched out his head and then what? And sinking. Because of this experience of Peter, if you read the Acts of the Apostle chapter 4, verse 12, it says that there is no name given to any man by which you can save Jesus. Friends of Christ, Jesus has come to redeem us. He is our Savior. Often when we are sick, when we have suffering, we begin to run here and there, looking for a miracle center, another miracle center, and so on. In the gospel of today, we are told that the crowds were looking for Jesus. And when Peter saw him, he said, where have you been? Everybody has been searching for you. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we look for Jesus, not because we believe in him, but because we want to get miracles. Remember what happened in John chapter 6? The people were looking for Jesus. And when they found him, they said, where have you been? We have been looking for you. Jesus said, you are not looking for me because you believe in me. But because we want to eat bread, many of us Catholics, we move from one miracle center to another miracle center, running from one prophet to another prophet, and compiling our problems. And compiling our problems. And that is why, when you go there, you want to trust you, they will tell you that they have a solution to that problem. I will beg you to grant their fruits and plenty. Christ our Lord. Thank you very much, Father, for that lovely and wonderful holy. God bless you.
and her leaders. That they may continue to give hope and courage to our troubled world. And also uphold the authentic and life giving Christian principles. Even in the face of sufferings, we pray, O oh Lord.
Mrs. Rosalind Omoboya.
then we thank God that for her life because it's not the length of years that you spend, but it's the impact. You can see that the children, none of us are suffering. All of us are impacted by their discipline, by their principles, by the education they've given us. And today we thank God for our life. And we pray that the Almighty God in heaven will accept the repose of our soul and forgive her her shortcomings. Thank you very much. Um, sir. In the family, we keep on saying it. The person who stands for the truth has come. As it is in the family of our mama. The person who will tell you the truth to your face, no matter who, God, uh, who, who you are, has come. So we we'll try our best to see that we stand by that principle and come to uh, follow her footsteps. Then secondly, she doesn't joke with charity. Every, every November from December, she will make sure that she will fulfill that um, 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 uh, charity by buying plenty of bags of rice, buying granite oil, buying tomato. But I have, I have agreed that I should continue with that. I did it this December when she was not alive. So she's somebody who gives out. That's why when you talk about somebody who is very close spiritually to God, and she's very prayerful. She does charity, she's prayerful, and uh, we will remember for her heart for all those things that she stands for. Trustworthy, honesty, somebody who gives her charity, and somebody who is very spiritual. Thank you, man.